The Dream That Divides America What does the American dream mean today? And why do Republicans and Democrats accuse each other of trying to destroy it? When the writer of a best-selling book, The Epic of America, introduced the idea of the American dream in 1931, the term was immediately adopted into the national lexicon. It elegantly expressed the traditional vision of America as the land of opportunity, a place where a person could escape the inequalities of Europe and make a better and richer and fuller life for themselves. The dream element signified ambition, but was vague, and so could mean very different things for different people. A dream of freedom, perhaps, or wealth, fame, power, and so on. Each American dream was personal, but all versions depended on the idea of the USA as a land where anything was possible with courage, hard work, and determination. Since then, every political candidate and president has talked about the American dream. In the good times, particularly during the boom years of the post-war period, it's been a way of rallying people with a positive ideal. In 2007, for example, future President Barack Obama, Democrat, was able to present himself as an embodiment of the American dream and the candidate of hope for a better future for everyone, saying, When our fellow Americans are denied the American dream, our own dreams are diminished. Eight years later, when Donald Trump declared himself as a Republican presidential candidate, he chose to play on people's anxieties about the economy and their future, ending his speech by saying, The American dream is dead. Today, far from uniting people behind a shared ideal, the American dream bitterly divides them because it is being used in such partisan ways. Democrats and Republicans both say that they are the party who defends the American dream. And they both say that their opponents are destroying it. And in a way, they are both right, because they have different ideas of what it means. For Republicans, the American dream is about self-reliance and hard work. Theirs is the traditional idea of America as the place where you can go from having nothing to having it all, or at least to having a house, a nice car, and a family. And they are convinced that they are the true defenders of the ideal because they can see a clear line throughout the history that connects them back to the nation's pioneers. Those early Americans had no help from the government, they say. They didn't get welfare checks. They were self-reliant men and women working hard to make a better life for themselves. It is a moral issue for many Republicans. They believe that a rich person deserves to be rich because they have worked hard to achieve their success. By extension, a poor person deserves to be poor because they must be lazy or lack initiative. So why should a hard-working rich person have their money taken away in taxes to be given to a poor person? There is an unavoidable racial element to this, as explained by Elizabeth Suhai in her forthcoming book, Debating the American Dream. Most Republicans are white, and low-income people are disproportionately black and Latino. Racism allows many white Americans to easily envision racial minorities as lazy and, thus, undeserving of government assistance. For Democrats, the reality is more complicated than that. They say that apart from a brief period following the civil rights era, when progressive policies allowed a small black middle class to prosper, the American dream has only ever been a white American dream. Martin Luther King Jr., in his final speech, the night before his assassination, was making the same point about the fight for civil rights when he said, I felt that we were, in reality, standing up for the best 
in the American dream. The Democrat version of the dream, therefore, is an ideal of America as a fair country, a place that offers everyone opportunity because it is economically just and unbiased, because you can only judge some to be lazy and others not, as Republicans do, if everyone has the same chance to better themselves. This is not the case, however, because America's systemic racism prevents minorities from having the same opportunities that a white person enjoys. The poor, Democrats argue, are trapped in a self-reinforcing system of poverty that continues generation after generation. The only way to break that cycle and truly offer everyone the chance of realizing an American dream of their own is through progressive government policies such as are considered normal in many European countries. Republicans passionately counter that the Democrats, although well-intentioned, are naively destroying the American dream by trying to help the poor. If you offer people an easy option such as a government handout, they say, then they won't be motivated to work hard or start a business of their own. America, in consequence, will cease to be the dynamic land of entrepreneurs that has made it the richest country in the world. Today, the tension between these two American dreams is at a breaking point. The reason is that it's not just ethnic minorities who find themselves trapped outside the American dream anymore. In recent years, millions of working-class whites have lived through old industries disappearing, jobs delocalizing to China, and humans being replaced by machines. They are angry because they believe in the Republican narrative of self-reliance yet have discovered that they can't escape their position through hard work. Donald Trump offered them an alternative rationale for their position. The American dream had been stolen from them by a mixture of Democrat favoring of minorities, illegal immigrants taking their jobs, and unfair foreign competition. Indeed, he suggested, in the hands of extremist ethnic minority Democratic politicians, the white American was having not just his dream, but his entire country stolen from him. I am the only thing standing between the American dream and total anarchy, madness, and chaos, Donald Trump told them. And the American nightmare is that millions of people believe him. The fight to determine the meaning of the American dream is on, and ultimately, it is a fight for the soul of the nation. You can define every other country in the world based on ethnicity or geography, as President Joe Biden said in 2021. We are the only one based on an idea.